I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Go, go! Usually when a movie franchise makes it to eight movies, that means it's gone downhill. Jason taking Manhattan, Ernest going to Africa, Michael Myers fighting Buster Rhymes. Motherfucker. But the Fast and the Furious franchise is no ordinary franchise, as the series is racing faster than ever in the wake of Paul Walker's tragic death, with this weekend's The Fate of the Furious. And with Vin Diesel and his crew now traveling around the world and doing spy shit, it's hard to believe that this franchise started out 16 years ago with a simple little street racing movie, one that ended up being a big sleeper hit in 2001. I mean, it certainly did better than the other racing movie that came out earlier that year, the Sylvester Stallone diesel drama known as Drift. This was another major turning point in the topsy-turvy career of Sylvester Stallone, who took four years to get financing for this flick that he hoped would do for racing what Rocky did for boxing. And with Stallone handling the screenplay and Rennie Harlan behind the director's seat, whose last collaboration with Sly on Cliffhanger gave Stallone a big comeback. This movie seemed destined to place first in the box office race that weekend, which it did. But mind you, it was a slow-ass weekend at the movies, and its competition was One Night at McCool's. One night at McCool's. So the movie ended up making fuck all at the box office, got burned by critics, and was awarded with seven Razzie nominations, forcing Stallone into the world of direct-to-video purgatory until Rocky and Rambo would pull him out. So let's fuel up our tanks, put on our helmets, and start our engines as we prepare to tackle the movie once called the worst car film ever made by Jay Leno. And those are some fighting words coming from Jay Leno. He knows cars. He owns a garage full of cars. And he starred in a movie where Mr. Miyagi kicked a dude's head in through the window of a car. <laughs> Can you do that, Stallone? Well, how about you, Vin Diesel? No? You can't? Yeah. I didn't think so. So we open at the halfway point of the 2001 Champ Car World Series, where the lead is being taken by newcomer Jimmy Bly, played by Kip Pardue, thanks to the help of his fame-hungry brother and business manager DeMille, played by Robert Sean Leonard, and his crusty team owner and former racer Carl Henry, played by Burt Reynolds, who's lost the use of his legs, dresses like Colonel Sanders, and is literally chewing gum constantly, like Norm Macdonald's impression of him on SNL. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Yeah, well, that's your opinion. <laughs> but the former champion Bo Brandenburg, played by Till Schweiger, is sick of losing his lead to this rookie, and successfully bumps Jimmy's car off the track to regain first place. Oh, they touch and Bly's in trouble! <laughs> Carl, concerned that Jimmy is cracking under the pressure of his newfound fame and fortune, decides to bring back his former driver, Joe Hello. Tanto, played by Sylvester Stallone. Crusher, it's time to call Joe Tanto. <laughs> Joe Tanto. That sounds like a name that Stallone's character in Guardians of the Galaxy 2 might have. And Tanto agrees to rejoin the team as Jimmy's new teammate and mentor, where Joe proves to his new teammates that he's still got the right stuff. What's he doing? He's just wound up, doing his corn fiddle, relaxing. He's gonna hold a controlled slide going full out, and then he's gonna drift over and pick up three coins. Okay, so if the penny pressing machine at your local amusement park ever shuts down, just give Joe Tanto a call and he'll take care of it. And thanks to Joe's mentorship, Jimmy Bly takes back his winning streak, and also starts falling in love with his rival racer's dump fiance, Sophia, played by Estella Warren. So that's where the jealous Bo starts taking his rivalry with Jimmy off the racetrack, and the audience starts to realize this is definitely written by the same guy behind the Rocky movies. Enjoy this one, Captain again. I must break you. In fact, the Rocky movie that Sloan is certainly trying to ape here is Rocky V, with the old retired sports veteran coming back in the game to help train a young, cocky newcomer and a jackass businessman trying to wedge his way between their mentorship. In fact, all that's missing for the proceedings is the Rattlers! Unbelievable! And much like Rocky V, this flick trades in any semblance of real drama for plenty of flashy and testosterone-fueled melodrama, along with plenty of inspirational platitudes from Sylvester Stallone that literally feel like lines from the rejected first draft of Rocky Balboa. And the fear? It's gone. Fear is never gone. Sometimes it's hard to breathe. You know, I feel like this beast inside me. I got will and I got faith. Because I believe you can will yourself in anything, do anything. 
That's how winning is done! Plus, add in all these torrid love triangles and dysfunctional family arguments, and you've got yourself a two hour long soap opera on steroids. But one that is not without a lot of corny entertainment value and awfully goodness. Namely, the climactic street race that Stallone gets into with his young ward, where the two of them fling bad CGI manhole covers at each other, drive underneath trailer trucks like they're Clark Griswold, and manage to blow air up a woman's skirt. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, ma'am, but you are no Marilyn Monroe. Now, for many viewers, this movie will be a slog to get through, but for me, who fondly remembers the stream of crappy movies coming at us in 2001, it's a dumb, fun, and easily mockable watch. It's got a soundtrack full of thumping techno and rap rock music that even Limp Bizkit would call lame. It's got Burt Reynolds and Sylvester Stallone facing off in a face-to-face -face battle of grumpy old actors shouting at each other. Don't do this. It's done! Then undo it. Oh, you suddenly can Don't kill him off! Don't kill him off! I WANT YOU TO KILL YOURSELF! I ALREADY WORKED AROUND THE CLOCK! GIVE ME BACK MY SON! And it's got editing straight out of a goddamn Mountain Dew commercial. I mean, this thing is edited like a Tony Scott movie on crack. Uh, just look at how they edit this scene where Joe and Jimmy meet for the first time. How you doing? Nice run out there. Nice is okay. Hey, listen, uh... No, your eyes didn't deceive you. They just reversed the shot of Robert Sean Leonard getting up from his chair to make it look like he was sitting back down in the chair. Let's see that in an instant replay. <laughs> if nothing that I just described to you sounds the least bit fun, then go watch Ron Howard's Rush instead. That's a genuinely good movie with basically the same story as this one. But if you think it sounds like it's right up your alley, then by all means, give it a watch. If you're able to watch it, that is. Because this movie is not available on any online streaming service. I checked. And for that matter, Rhinestone isn't streaming online either. Do it for that! Howard! Do it for that! And if I have to go out of my way to buy a physical copy of fucking Rhinestone on DVD to do a review on it, I am going to have a freakout that would make John Rambo himself turn green with envy. Nothing is over! Nothing! Now it's time to pull our cars in for a pit stop, refuel our tanks with top shelf alcohol, and rev up our engines for the final lap of the awfully good drinking game. Take a shot or drink every time there's another title screen telling us where we are, including the opening title that tells us of 900 million spectators, 250 miles per hour, 20 races, one championship, and 0.5 Sylvester Stallone's IQ. Hey, 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 I heard that. You see another use of bad CGI. <laughs> All right, guys, you've had your fun with that Daytona USA game. Now, will you put the game away and change the TV back to the race, please? One of the drivers has a flashback in the middle of a race. You better win this thing. Win it, or you're gonna look like a damn fool. Use the false loop. Look what you did, you little jerk. One of the drivers crashes their cars. Oh. Tis but a scratch. I've had worse. I'm invincible! And take a double shot when you see an old 70s photograph of Sylvester Stallone and Burt Reynolds, which I believe is a production photo of that abandoned Smokey vs. Rocky movie. As well as for the two times you hear Stallone humming to himself while he's driving. Why is he humming? Just some crazy thing he does when he's pushing close to the edge. Now it's time for everyone's favorite game. Name that tune with Sylvester Stallone. Let's begin. What's he doing? Now, if you viewers at home guess the song that he was humming was mm 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 by the Crash Test Dummies, that would be correct. on the nudie watch, Rennie Harlan clearly used directing this movie as a chance to film scantily clad women in the crowds of NASCAR races. I mean, not that I'm complaining, necessarily. There are some fine looking women in this movie, especially these two little numbers walking over here. Whoa! On the enjoyableness continuum scale from Boulder Bruce, Driven is about as good a movie as you'd expect from the same production company that gave you Half Past Dead, Ballistic X vs. Sever, and Battlefield Earth, and makes it to the finish line to play 7 out of 10. It's sad when you can say that Stallone's porno movie was better for his career than this movie was. I'm Jesse J for Jovo.com, and I for one cannot wait to finally find out next month what part Sylvester Stallone is gonna play in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Man, I am just hyped as hell!
Hey there, everybody. My name is Squirrel Girl. Hey, yo. All right. Joe Blow, he's showing electric a lot. Joe Blow, won't you know me like the hero?